So Netflix has a whole host of visually stunning movies to choose from right now, but some of them can be kind of hard to find. I've put 20 of them in this video. We're gonna spend about one minute per movie telling you why you should watch it. I do have these in ranked order, but let's go ahead and let it rip with number 20, which is one of the newest movies on this list, Troll. This is a Netflix original from Norway that was just added to Netflix on December 1st. If you ever saw the comedy slash mockumentary Troll Hunter, this is very, very similar, but a much more serious take. It's very much like a Godzilla movie, especially for something that is a Netflix original. This has some big, sweeping special effects. I do feel like the story gets a little bit lost. It's not bad, it's just a little bit flat and bland, whereas all the visuals are pretty fantastic in this movie, which is why it's at the back of the list. Again, not a bad movie, but could have been a lot better. I could say the same thing about my next pick, Dracula Untold. Sometimes the world doesn't need another hero. Sometimes what it needs is a monster. Now this sort of presents itself as the true story of Vlad the Impaler. It is not. This is a supernatural story about Dracula with, again, big sweeping special effects. However, the story does come through. It's just all a big work of fiction that, again, marketing-wise, they kind of posed as a Vlad the Impaler movie, which I would love to see. I would love to see a realistic historical drama about Vlad the Impaler. That's not what you're gonna get with this. And it ends up just being sort of a standard popcorn movie, which is fine, I like those. But I will say that Luke Evans as the lead here and Dominic Cooper as the villain really do elevate this movie. They make it much better than I think it otherwise would have been. But if you tend to like more supernatural horror type movies that are not too scary, then Dracula Untold is a pretty excellent one. Now, before moving on with the rest of the movies on this list, I do want to tell you about today's sponsor, Bespoke Post which is a monthly membership club that delivers you a box of awesome, of top shelf goods from under the radar brands. It's free to join, you can skip any month and cancel any time. Actually, 90% of the products come from small brands, many of which are based right here in the US. And you get to pick from a variety of different boxes that change every month, and they're always filled with cool stuff like outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, clothing, and a lot more. And it's based on your preferences when you go Go to my link in the video description below, you scroll down, you take a quiz, and they're gonna only offer you things that you're interested in. Each box is valued at around $70, and it costs you way less than that. This one I've actually not opened yet, so let's check it out. Nicely wrapped. So this is a pretty nice dot kit, which is actually great because I one I've got is probably 20 years old. Oh, and it's full of stuff. You can't really see, but it's a thick wetsuit material. I mean, the dot kit is nice. I will use it, but it's completely full of stuff. Check out this beauty. Let's see if we can get it in the light. This is a beautiful machete. And again, you get to pick what you want. If you don't want this, you get to pick one of the other boxes and you can cancel if you don't like what they offer that month. And new Bespoke Post subscribers will save 20% on their first box of awesome when you just go to my link in the video description or go to bespokepost.com slash flickconnection20 and enter the code flickconnection20 at checkout to save that 20%. Again, my particular boxes were the restore kit with again, this really cool dot kit. I'm surprised at how cool this thing looks and the slash box. Again, go to that link in the video description or just type in bespokepost.com slash flickconnection20 and then enter that code Flick Connection 20 and you'll save 20% on your first box. It's a great deal. But speaking of great stuff, let's talk about the rest of the movies on this list. Now my number 18 pick is another recently released Netflix original. It is a family friendly movie, but don't skip ahead. Let me explain something first. I know some of you like to skip these family friendly movies, but Slumberland not only stars Jason Momoa, but this is actually a live action remake of Little Nemo Adventures in Slumberland. <laughs> What? Now, I know that reference went over most people's heads, but that is an obscure Japanese animated movie from the 1980s that is absolutely amazing. 
If you did see Slumberland and liked it, I highly recommend checking out Little Nemo. It is included on Prime Video right now, at least it is here in the US. While it is a family-friendly movie, Slumberland does deal with some fairly heavy themes for young kids, but as you can tell by its inclusion on this list, it's visually stunning, and Jason Momoa is actually having a lot of fun as this Flip character. Yes, if you're familiar with Little Nemo, he plays Flip. And I mean, I've liked him in things over the years, but he's always this badass, tough guy. It's kind of fun to watch him play a very, very different character in this movie. So if you're a fan of Momoa's or Little Nemo, I highly recommend checking out Slumberland. Now my next pick is a Netflix original, but it's not a recent one. It's one of the oldest Netflix originals and one of the biggest at the time that it was released, Spectral. Three days ago, we conducted a raid. Men just started falling. Now this is a supernatural sci-fi movie that is actually pretty fantastic as far as Netflix originals go. In fact, this one is much better than a lot of other things in this genre they've released since. The way it's filmed it looks very much like Black Hawk Down and other modern warfare movies, but there is something supernatural happening here. James Badgedale leads this movie off and he is a fantastic leading man. He tends to do smaller indie movies. I'm a big fan of his and really enjoyed seeing him lead a more action heavy movie like this. And there is quite a bit of action in this movie and what I really enjoy about Spectral is not only did the story like work and all the performances were good enough, at no point did it really feel exactly like something I'd seen before. Like yes, it looks kind of like Black Hawk Down, yet the setup and most of the action that unfolds, again, is very different from anything I've seen in any other movie before, which earned big points for me. Now my next pick is another family friendly movie, but it really is one of the better ones on Netflix right now. It's Zathura, directed by Jon Favreau. If that name doesn't quite click, he's responsible for launching The Mandalorian, but also Elf with Will Ferrell, Chef, which he starred in, Iron Man, the live action Jungle Book. I mean, he is a heavy hitter director, and this is a fantastic family movie that's basically like Jumanji in space, but it's a really fun watch with the kids and again has fantastic visuals, especially for something that's almost 20 years old. Tom Hanks stars in my next pick, and while it is one of the more visually stunning movies he's done, it's certainly not a movie he's most famous for. I'm talking about Angels and Demons. May God forgive you for what you've done. The Father of God has issues. They won't be with what we've done. They'll be with what we're about to do. In this movie, Hanks plays Robert London, the same character from The Da Vinci Code, and he's trying to solve a mystery and prevent a terrorist attack at the Vatican. So it starts off with an interesting premise and develops into a pretty fantastic mystery and visually has some incredible moments in it that top the Da Vinci Code. While I think the Da Vinci Code was tighter and delivered the original story better than Angels and Demons, Angels and Demons kind of got a little bit wilder towards the end and I really appreciated it for that. And it too was directed by Ron Howard who just always puts amazing things on screen. So even if you never had any real interest in this one, I can tell you it is much better than you might have expected and certainly looks and feels much better than a lot of things added to Netflix recently. But speaking of things added to Netflix recently, I just recently watched Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Now you may have noticed there have been a rash of Pinocchio movies, not just the Disney live action remake again with Tom Hanks, but They've had some other smaller ones, and there have been other adaptations over the last century, most of them not good at all. Guillermo del Toro's take on Pinocchio is easily one of my favorites I've seen since the original. Now it is darker, it's a little more grim, but it never quite goes into the Nightmare Before Christmas territory, so it's still very acceptable for kids. There are quite a few Nazi salutes that happen in it, because this does take place between World War I and World War II. And there are major changes, but the stop motion animation style is stunning at every single frame. And this version is two hours long. There's a bit more meat on the bone than there is in the original Pinocchio story, which I appreciated as well. But again, it being Del Toro, this movie just looks incredible from start to finish. Now my next pick used a lot of cutting edge technology to tell literally one of the oldest stories in existence. And it looked amazing back then. 
It still looks amazing today, even if some of the technology is outdated in Beowulf. I am the chief in the darkness, the challenge in the night. Mine is strength and lust and power. I am power. Now, even though the technology is a little bit outdated here, there are still gaggles of stunning shots in Beowulf that absolutely still hold up today. And this features an all-star cast of voices with folks like Anthony Hopkins, Crispin Glover, Ray Winston, Angelina Jolie, and the story of Beowulf is not only one of the oldest stories in existence, it is also one of the most epic and this animated version really brings it to life in a pretty fantastic way. Now, believe it or not, my number 12 pick is a movie I was actually a little bit disappointed with. However, it still earns this place on the list because it is visually stunning and ultimately is a good story. I'm talking about Elysium. Hey, bring down the bone saw! This ain't gonna kill me. Now, the reason I was disappointed is because I am a huge fan of District 9. This was director Neil Bloomkamp's follow-up to District 9, and while it is fantastic and has some just breathtaking moments in it, I didn't feel like the story came through as strongly as it ultimately did with District 9, and I was a little bit let down because this is a bigger movie with more effects, bigger stars, kind of more potential, if you will, and while it wasn't squandered, it wasn't quite exploited as well as everything was in District 9, which I thought was just brilliant. That movie came to life in such an amazing way. Elysium, for lack of a better word, feels a little bit stiffer, but still an amazing sci-fi movie with just this incredible cyberpunk aesthetic. It really is fantastic stuff. Visually, it's one of the best on Netflix or on this list right now. Story-wise, as you can tell by its placement, it's a little middle of the pack, in my opinion. And I've ranked one of the biggest, newest movies on Netflix right now at the number 11 spot with Bullet Train. I will find you. Why? I will ruin your life the way you ruin mine. Dude, I don't even know you. Now, in a recent video, I gave this movie very high marks. I liked it a lot. However, it is just a fun, wild action movie. Yes, there are story elements that are complex, that all work, but they're all done really just to serve the action. They're really there to make the movie more fun and interesting, but Bullet Train really never quite brings it home, which ultimately I was fine with. I was okay with this just being a fun, wild action movie, because it is that. The action in this is incredibly fun to watch, even if it is very violent at times. But you can tell Brad Pitt, the rest of the cast, the director, they all had fun with this concept and I had a blast in the theater watching it and have watched it a few other times since and really enjoyed it. Again, not the strongest in terms of storytelling, but in terms of just pure entertainment value, Bullet Train is top notch. And I would actually put my number 10 pick into a similar category of just a fun, wild, over-the-top action movie with action sequences that are not only entertaining, but that just look different than anything else I've ever seen in Wanted. Now, I can understand where some people wouldn't like this movie, but man, does this thing just ooze style. It's got a killer soundtrack. Even the bit in the beginning where James McAvoy is going to the same job day after day and he's not enjoying his life, even that part of this movie is visually stunning and it just gets better and better. Now, it's got tons of weird, wonky elements that just don't work for some people and Really, the whole basic concept here of bending bullets and things makes absolutely no sense, but my goodness, does it look good on screen. I've had a blast watching this over the years. I'm honestly surprised it has not spawned sequels. If it has been a while since you've seen Wanted, I can promise you there are a handful of action sequences in this movie you've likely forgotten about and forgotten how good they actually are. Ron Howard makes the list again with one of his more serious movies over the past few years, Rush. This is an incredible battle between these two great drivers. This is easily one of my favorite Chris Hemsworth movies outside of the Marvel Universe. In fact, it might be my favorite movie of his ever. 
This takes place in the 1970s and revolves around a vicious feud between two very famous Formula One drivers, James Hunt and Nicky Lauda. Now, the thing about Rush is that all of the interpersonal stuff, all of the things that are happening off the track, are all pretty interesting and help move everything forward. They're actually pretty well done. You're not just waiting for the races to commence. However, it's Ron Howard. When the races do begin, they're shot in a way that is just absolutely breathtaking. From the little close-ups of the rain hitting their helmets to just the sound of these Formula One cars, the crashes, everything looks absolutely top-notch, the performances are all great, and this is one of those sports-related movies where you need zero interest or knowledge in the sport. You don't have to know or care anything about Formula One to thoroughly enjoy Rush. My next pick comes from director Sam Raimi, one of my favorite directors. He's most famous for creating the Evil Dead series, but he also created the first three Spider-Man movies and a bunch of other fantastic stuff. However, the quick and The Dead might be one of his most entertaining movies to date. Now I know that's a strong statement, I'm not saying it's his best movie, I really am partial to The Evil Dead, but man is The Quick and the Dead a fun western. Now by being a fun western, that does not necessarily make it the best western, but it is still a blast to watch and has an incredible cast featuring Sharon Stone, Russell Crowe, before he was really famous, a very young Leonardo DiCaprio. Obviously Gene Hackman kills it, but you've got a bunch of great character actors in this as well. And it's all hyper real. In fact, this feels much more like a comic book movie than a lot of actual comic book movies do. And it takes place in a town where there are shootouts at noon every day. It's a tournament of sorts, and it makes for a just blast to watch. While the movie does have serious moments, I highly recommend that you do not take it too seriously in order to get the most enjoyment out of it. My next pick is an action movie, but this one's sci-fi and it does have some things you can take somewhat seriously. I'm talking about Tom Cruise in Oblivion. 60 years ago, Earth was attacked. We won the war, but they destroyed half the planet. Everyone's been evacuated. Nothing human remains. Now this, I think, is a somewhat underrated movie. I know it was successful when it came out, and there are a lot of people that like this movie, me being one of them. However, it does kind of punch above its weight. I mean, honestly, if Tom Cruise had not been in this movie, had it been a lesser known person, this may have developed into a cult classic. The only reason I say that is because Oblivion doesn't really stand out in Tom's filmography. I would put Edge of Tomorrow above it, which is another sci-fi movie that came out around the same time, which honestly kind of overshadowed Oblivion. This movie not only features some incredible shots, I mean, I know it's all animated and they're not real, but it is a stunning post-apocalyptic world that this movie takes place in, and that is more than enough entertainment for me at the beginning of the movie. And then a pretty intense story starts to develop. It begins as a mystery and things ramp up quite a bit, if you don't recall. So not only does Oblivion have a lot of fantastic action in it, but it's also got a pretty interesting mystery that reveals itself in a pretty spectacular way. All right, Tom Hardy makes the list, but he actually makes this list twice in the same movie, Legend. A shootout, right, is a shootout. Like a western. <laughs> now, the last handful of movies were mostly kind of wild, over-the-top action movies because those tend to be pretty visually stunning. Now, this is an English gangster movie that actually can be pretty talky, but it's one of the most beautiful ones in that genre I've ever seen. This takes place in the 1960s, so it's got a killer soundtrack, beautiful costumes, it's more colorful than I think the real world is, so it's a little bit hyper-stylized, but not too much, and it just makes for a visual feast. Tom Hardy is playing two different characters, kind of wildly different characters, and he's killing it with both of them. This is actually based on the Cray brothers, who were real twin gangsters in England in the 1960s. So this one has some great scenes of dialogue that are just fantastic. It's not all about the action. This one's a really good gangster movie, but again, it just looks better than almost any gangster movie I've ever seen, and I'm a huge fan of the genre. I've seen almost everything in that genre. 
My number five pick comes from India. This is a movie that I have rated on lists before, but I've got it ranked higher on this one than I did last time because after watching it again, I gave it higher marks. R, R, R. Now, if you've never seen a movie from India, trust me, this is the first one to watch. If you're not into this movie within the first 15 minutes, turn it off, I guess, because the first 15 minutes really do start with a bang. This one is absolutely packed with action, fight sequences that almost never seem to end, and what earned it such big points for me on the second viewing is that all of the action, for the most part, looks fairly different from American movies and really action movies from other countries. I watch quite a bit from around the world. And this movie has an interesting flavor, not only because it's packed with a lot of cultural things from India that naturally impart a different flavor, but the way the action is shot is not only wild and over the top, it's absolutely stunning. Almost every single frame, especially the action in this movie, you can pause it. It's like a poster. It looks incredible. Even if it doesn't look and feel realistic, this movie will never forget to entertain you. Now, they do have an English dubbed version, which I actually recommend in this case because the Indian version, the Hindi version, is actually also dubbed. This was originally filmed in a different language from India, so if you're going to watch it in an Indian language, it's actually still going to be voice actors. And the action here does get goofy, but it's incredibly entertaining. And this is a long movie. It's well over two hours and has an insane amount of action sequences in it that, again, never seem to quit. Now, while RRR was fun, wild, over the top, my next pick is kind of wild and over the top, but does feel much more real and grounded. It's also a recently released Netflix original, but this one comes from France. It's titled Athena. Now this is about a massive riot that breaks out in this neighborhood. It has to do with police brutality. That's kind of what kicks everything off in the first minute of this movie. And what you need to know about Athena going into it is all of the shots are done as long takes. The movie itself doesn't feel like it's one incredibly long take, but each chapter feels like one very, very long take, and it was shot that way. It is a bunch of long takes threaded together to look like they're longer than they actually are. And what's so great about that with Athena is it keeps you locked into the action that, again, feels incredibly realistic. And that's not the only reason it makes the list here. I mean, it's got a good story, incredible performances, but there are so many moments in this outside of the riots and the action that are absolutely stunning. I was actually just blown away by how beautiful this movie became at moments. Visually, it is easily one of the most beautiful things on Netflix right now. And again, it's about a massive riot and still manages to be just breathtaking all the way through. Now, my number three pick is the last family-friendly one on this list, but when I describe it, you will understand why Labyrinth earns the number three spot. This is one I have watched within the last year with my kids. Not only did they love it, but my goodness, for a movie that was released in 1986 that is filled with puppets and practical effects, Labyrinth looks absolutely incredible. All the sets, all the sequences, with one exception, in Labyrinth are so hyper detailed that when you see them in HD today on a high definition TV, it looks better than you've probably ever seen it before. If you're anywhere close to my age, odds are when you originally saw this, it was either in the theater or more likely on VHS. I'm telling you, if it's been a long time since you've seen Labyrinth, watch it in HD now. It is amazing to behold, especially when you remind yourself this came out in 1986. It's almost 40 years old. But that brings me to my number two pick, which is my favorite James Bond movie personally. And obviously that's debatable. Everyone's got their favorite, but it would be hard to argue that Skyfall is not the most beautiful Bond movie ever put to film. Now, there are other good-looking James Bond movies, but my goodness, Skyfall is hitting on all cylinders when it comes to the cinematography and just some of the things that they decide to put on screen, including 
the opening action sequence, which is far and away my favorite James Bond action sequence. And again, with one exception, there's one shot of Daniel Craig on the dirt bike on a roof that doesn't look real. Aside from that, everything looks 100% genuine because most of it is. There's not a ton of visual effects in this sequence or this movie for that matter. Most of the visual effects in Skyfall were done to sort of heighten the atmosphere in the mood, not necessarily to make giant explosions and make cars flip over. Again, most of what you're actually seeing is in camera and it's completely real. In fact, just in terms of cinematography and visuals, Skyfall is probably the most beautiful movie on Netflix right now. And then my number one pick is actually two movies because I could not make a decision between A Clockwork Orange and Eyes Wide Shut. Now, had you asked me this a couple months ago, Clockwork Orange would have won. This movie looks incredible, and what's so amazing about it is all of the locations, all of these futuristic locations, were all within a short drive of Stanley Kubrick's home. I say short drive, probably within an hour or so. And the way that this movie is shot is fairly simple. Something like this could easily be made today with no effects and just a small digital camera and a small crew, but People don't make movies this good with that type of equipment. Stanley Kubrick was able to bring things to life in a way that nobody else really was. But I have recently rewatched Eyes Wide Shut and I gain a greater appreciation for this movie every time that I see it. This was his final film. He died before it was released. There was a lot of hype before it came out and it fell incredibly flat. People just did not like it. And I can kind of understand why. This is a very, not just difficult movie to understand, but a difficult movie to sort of get into. But time has served this movie and really all of Stanley Kubrick's work incredibly well. But that is the list. I will keep making these videos as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this special Netflix episode and you will see me on the next one.